Good morning, everyone. Welcome back from holiday. All right. So markets uh, woke up in a little bit of a negative mood. Not unusual, considering the location where they're at. Somewhat after Friday's reversal day, which um, I suspected was going to fail. Wrote about that in the weekend weekend letter. Of course, why? Well, overall, I mean, this is neutral and it's at resistance. And one of the things that we reviewed last week as to a bias of this move up following through to the upside was a decent retracement, meaning a pullback toward that 50 MA and then our breath internal to be near zero. And one of the things also mentioned on Friday morning was that, hey, you know what, this was gapping down, but historically, what I said was before holiday, I mentioned the latter in the year holidays, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year tend to be bullish. And I wasn't sure about this holiday, but, you know, generally holiday before the holiday tends to be an up day. And it turned out to be after 11 o'clock, you know, things didn't go down. So they went up. And we had this decent sized green day. And I was like, okay, that's kind of skeptical as far as that actually following through because it's so close to the prior high. So the the idea with pullbacks, I don't care how you measure them. You know, some people would use fibs or whatever, some kind of pullback. But from my point of view, as we look at things, it's like, hey, healthy pullbacks after a strong move up are good because it shows some, you know, hesitancy as as to the strength of the move. And so things pull back a reasonable amount. So when you get the reversal day, it's far enough away from resistance that it's got a decent, you know, distance to run before it gets to the first resistance area. And then if it's truly strong, it should continue to go higher. And and that's the, the thought process behind a strong uptrend. Now, you know, this little move up is, you know, upward, but within a trading range and come into this resistance. So again, a weekly chart, well, it was actually questionable as to, you know, this reversal following through so close to resistance. And now we see this move down and it's not gapping below the green bar, but it's gapping pretty darn deep into the green bar. And you can see my cursor there. Still on support, but You know, opening like this, it's near some support. Let me just look again. Not quite at the bottom of it, but, you know, maybe they buy the gap down because it's on support and it's gapping like that. And then we'll just see how far it can go up. But ultimately, you know, just the thought from last week that it comes down here is reasonable. But now that this is failing, we always talk about the psychology behind patterns and that, you know, traders along this right? because of, of this it would expectation that it would go higher. So now the negation of this green bar is going to increase supply. Who's caught long? Let's cut the loss. You know, goes up you know, from the gap down. Maybe they sell you know, close to break even or wherever they bought, of course, and and so on. And so maybe it drives it a bit lower now. Again, we got to see where it's going to end the day, of course, you know, because gapping down, it could be another green bar or come down here and form a bottoming tail bar. That's all unknown. Now, our internals, this is still dead neutral. And, you know, a much higher probability would be that this comes down here and breath goes you know, probably below zero. I don't know. This comes down to the lower bands and wherever it ends up, that's a much higher probability for some type of decent longs because in any event, in the short term, I don't think it's getting out of this trading range. (laughs) So, you know, we'll see how far down it comes or the lack thereof during the week. But, um, you know, that 400, 4,000 level, and 4,000 in the SPX should provide decent support. So we'll move under the 50 MA 
is reasonable. And then, of course, we have all these bank earnings coming and economic reports coming, and you know that's going to move things around. So it's short-term bias. So down here, uh, where are the futures? And of course, we don't know what that's going to look like, but so far, you see it was higher overnight. So it triggers. Well, another one of the things that I wrote about in the letter was, hey, what's going to likely to happen here? Because, you know, my view was this didn't come down to where it would have been a higher probability um, that this would trigger the long and then fail. And, you know, let's, we'll see if this even gets below Friday's low or Thursday's low when it just jiggles around here. Right? So SPX. And the ranges have been contracting. Those lines are moving from, well, where they were last week. Why can't help? Can I move that damn thing? Because it's on that bar. All right. All right. Jake's helping me out here with 40 and a quarter. What we got down there. Okay. So as you would suspect, premiums are increasing as it drops. 40 and a quarter. This was from last week. Obviously, it never got there. Never got up here. 40, 50. So the, the, that half inch in, increment, 40, 50, typically will provide some support because of the just the value. It does have some minor support there. The 50 MA is at 40 and a quarter. So remember, SPX is going to gap down here. So let's move this down. Let's just assume that it opens where it is now, right? give or take, which would put it at 37-ish. So 40 and a quarter should be good. And if it drops at the open, maybe you get a little bit lower. And that should be fine. Now, up above was pretty close last I looked. Well, before things dropped a little bit, was 41.35. 35, probably no premium there anymore. 41, nope, 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 nope. You'd have to go to like 41.20-ish. And I say no to that. I mean, you know, overall the market has been acting bullishly, so maybe it could go up. And because of that overall bullish, you know, by the dip mentality, that's another reason for to having protection down below. Right. There was some news on Apple this morning. That was helping uh, marks go down. Why is this on Apple? Change that. You can see where this is at. I forget what the news was, but it was something bearish about Apple. That's helping the NASDAQ go down. And you can see the reversal bar. I don't know where it's going to end, but things are lower here. It's coming into support. It's unlikely they're going to collapse. Yeah, it was bad stuff about Apple. We're saying 40, 60, 80 possible pin area. Okay. Pin area. If you don't know what pin means, and Usually that means in option terminology that there is um, puts and calls that are relatively open interest close to each other that might pin it or there's a large area there, 40, 60, which I didn't look. The big open interest is at 4,000, uh, expiring in 11 days and 67 days. Hedge demand for market, least hedged demand for market makers. Okay, so McGraw's helping me with that. Least hedge demand for market makers, which means there is a low open interest there, right? So least hedges by market makers. So going through those levels wouldn't ignite something by market makers adjusting their hedges. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So just from a support and resistance point of view, that area here, you know, below below Thursday's low, 
which is right here, 4069. So we had part of discussions about this a week or so ago. What's our first reference point of support on any given day? The prior day's low. And, and this is a significant level here. Why? Because you've got two days, Wednesday and Thursday, with those lows at the same point. So what you would want to look for is, is if we go back to the futures. As it comes down here, you see the, the lows here. As it comes down there, let's say it hovers around here until 10 o'clock or so, and it can't go up, that's going to open up the door to going lower. So something else to keep in mind. What's the reaction to support and resistance? Well, basic thought is if it's at support, there's going to be buyers there. How far did it travel to get there? And then what does it do when it gets there? You know there's going to be buyers. So the, if it can't go up at all, that's bearish. And that's the idea behind a, bullet, a bearish one, two, three. Comes down hard. Next bar is a narrow range bar. It can't go up. And then you get follow through. So far, we see momentum, stronger momentum right, on the move down. Momentum's beginning to slow down here. You see the, the pivot low and then the turn close together. Maybe it tries to bounce up. You see the closes are clustered around here on the hourly chart. So why it's, it's hanging there. But ultimately, look, it, ideally, it comes down here. And then you get a counter trend bounce. So this kind of a pattern down here would be ideal. All right, let's continue. So I can hand it over to Dan. And we covered the cues and strong momentum. When you see that, it's a high pro coming from a base, there's a high probability it's going lower. Right. And then when it's momentum stalls, maybe it can bounce. Russell, same bearish bar. It was more bearish. The rain came down, small caps. We'll see how far it goes. Um, now, this doesn't really tell the story. So one of the things reviewed over the weekend was the industrials ETF. Um, let me just, I can't remember. I should remember them since I look at them, but I'm on a daily basis. But there's so many ETFs, industrials is XLI, XLI. And look at how that came down and on the weekly. So here you've got all of these cyclicals, deer, caterpillar. And part of the theme of that is more and more information is coming that a recession is here. And will be confirmed at some point, probably in the not too distant future. Um, the market is reacting to what it believes is coming. And where, you know, they believed it. I'm not so sure I believe it. Green bar up. Yeah, I believe it. And there's a void lurking below. And that is bearish. It breaks below these lows. So this is a continuation pattern right there. All right. What else? Let's move along here with interest rates. You know, they're bouncing off, off of support. You can see it down here. Um, so coming all the way down there, as this did, that's part of, you know, the idea of recession, slow, you know, less demand for money, interest rates come down. And at this point in time, it's just part of what we want to see happen, you know, because interest rates go down. Equities become, at some point, more desirable, you know, interest rates lower. And, um, you know, maybe market doesn't want recession, but this is what's getting put in its face right now. So now they're up a little bit. So there's this teetering back and forth between interest rates being good or bad. Why the market is so confused. It's silver reaching its destination. Hell of a move. Wish we took advantage of it. And wide range bar ending, pulling back here. 
as those interest rates move up a little bit and uh, inflation. You know, so we've got all these different messages back and forth as to, uh, you know, recession, inflation, interest rates, and why the market has been so squirmy because they can't get alignment of multiple concepts into market as well as market internals coming together and some kind of extremely high probability scenario setting up. So trading range continues. Um, transports, you know, pulled back there. And I suppose these are going to go lower. You can see the bearish bar. So we got industrials negating green bars or like call it the green bars ignored in today's title. And, you know, which they were as of last week in different markets, industrials, transports, and them going down together. Um, obviously, it's not, it's not positive. But at some point, they're going to maybe come down to the bottom of the range and things are going to be aligned for a great opportunity. Right? All right, that's it for me. Well, yours, Dan. Of course, all the banks are going to be reporting. <laughs> one of these regionals is the first one up on the on the 12th. So on Wednesday, I think it's uh of course. It just, just look like it's gonna close with that kind of a pattern. Yeah, and this this morning or over the weekend or whatever, they they also <laughs> added to the to the bad news saying they're they've suspended dividends on some preferred stock. So they're in trouble. You know, the, I forget who was on CNBC, but he, he, you know, everyone has an opinion, right? But he's, he thinks it's under control just because the Fed is, has flooded the, the sector with so much liquidity. But then you got other smart people who, who say, no, I mean, there's more cockroaches, there's, real bad commercial real estate that hasn't even started yet wait till they start refinancing so <clears throat> not a whole lot of earnings let's just jump right into my watch list here this was it shows it up 64 cents so in cs but that looks like a piece of garbage a cooter Oh, I lost my green market. Uh, Cooter here, medical devices. You know, could be the start of a bottoming pattern. Dell, there was some news. La the laptop sales are down post-COVID. I think it said Dell and Lenovo down 30%. But it's had a big run. has a price void, though, so that's a short watch and a call spread watch, TSM. Lowered some numbers. And, you know, Greg, you started off saying the market woke up in a good mood. And and I don't know if that's technically right, because it, it they were all up this morning. And then all of a sudden, at whatever time it was, 8 o'clock or whatever, they just rapidly started deteriorating. So I, I don't I don't know if I mean it. I'm only guessing it's news. Maybe one of these companies, um, McGraw told me dollar popped. Okay. And McGraw told me something about Macron rattling some cages, wants to be less dependent on the U S dollar. I don't know if that just happened pre-market or over the weekend. Uh, so TSM is an ADR. I mean, over the weekend, there was a lot more rattling about, China and Taiwan rhetoric and, you know, with the Ukraine thing hasn't gone away. So, you know, there's frick. I mean, many of these things bounced and fundamentalists are trying to figure out which ones are real instead of thrown out with the bathwater. But think about it. I mean, just use common sense. Uh, I mean, do you want to hold a lot of money in, in, in these weak banks like this? I sure as heck wouldn't. So they got real problems on their hands. 
I'm full. I think announced earnings, but I don't see anything. Uh, this one did two gap into the bottom of the range. I have no idea how something like this is is going to react. So we we just watch. Uh, Tups accountants issued a going concern exception. That's just that's like the kiss of death for for equity holders. Stay the heck away from accounting irregular uh, irregularities or your CPA firm saying going concern exception. Um, NVAX, I, I don't know what to do with that. Uh, Greg, here's another one. Look, look how this 200, this is my laptop, obviously, not what I do the weekend video on, but it kind of looks like scaled this. for everything you have on there. You got to scale it for price only. Ah, okay. So um, I don't know how you do that. In trade station uh, that's what you uh, need to okay that's the problem all right let's when um when we slow down um i'm sure my man alex will help me do that uh all right what do we got here gbx gapping up on earnings still range now we'll come back to you mu gapping up so the so the semis are down today um, but this one's up and that's so th this is a definite put spread idea th that's a nice gap from a bullish turn uh, bottom right I also have WDC in here is up and it's not a double bottom just because it's not it's not a W but it's a bull it's a gap from a bullish retest on major support so that's a um that's a definite put spread watch. I have them bottom right, maybe day trade. Always look at the cousins. STX is even stronger, right? The AB test that I call it, optometrist. Uh, this, this one's stronger than WDC. It's above like 20 and 200, has a void. I'm putting that on my other computer. Uh, looks great. Uh, but I, I'm gonna I'm not rushing into a darn thing here this morning. GFAI is one of these, you know, the AI sector's been ripping here recently. That's a very bullish pre-market consolidation. I'm gonna put that in a window. And then we can Later on, look at the same usual suspects in the sector, which is like S O U N A I. Oh, that's A U, never mind. A I got slammed on some of not accounting issues. Well, yes, accounting issues, but from one of these short, these uh, short attackers. Look at this volume. Last weekend's MT Live. Uh, this week's MT Live is going to be you know, on, on big bars and igniting patterns and so forth. And, you know, combining the two. Uh, Tesla has had various news come out, but it's on support. I don't know, we just got to come back to it. Um, somebody emailed me asking about hood. I said, yeah, Friday's high. You know, this, this is what we call a deep retracement. This is bullish consolidation at resistance. This is a closing breakout. I got potential long-term bottoming action, weekly, monthly. So yeah, let's let's put the old hood on the watch list. Um, a lot of these patterns where we said, yeah, you know, the kind of buy setups after big moves, but the problem is it's not a potent reversal and you still got a void here. So it's like in cell setups on the weekly. So it's like Greg was saying, you know, we're, we're that's why we were expecting a lot of these things to fail. And spiders, I didn't know if we would bounce today and maybe set up an on top. But, you know, now we have more information, obviously, with the gap down. Um, OLED strong as can be it's in an uptrend 
Uh, PKI is kind of a one, two, three. Set an alarm at um, 134. I think I did already. No, I didn't. AMT, big old bottoming pattern. This actually is a, is is like a triple bottom. You know, here here's your first W pattern, the new low plus. Now I have a third one. Now I have bullish price action and a void. That's a triple bottom on AMT. So that uh, that looks fantastic for a put spread if there's any juice. Uh, this is a one, two, three. And what we're what we're gonna do, this is a great pattern to sell an out of the money a naked call. And then if for some reason it turns out to be a breakdown failure and trades over this wide range bars high, then we just buy the stock <clears throat> to convert our short call into a covered call. Uh, CCI, yeah, another big old bottom and cutter. Um, Siri, I know Alex is watching. Uh, Myrna, we had in the letter and it's gapping over the entry. We're going to sell a put spread. EQIX, a little difficult on the entry, but th this is a bull flag. Here's my here's my flagpole. Here's another triple bottom. Look at that. That's a triple bottom. This actually would be a great um, chart to show on Wednesday, Greg, on wide range bars. Because we, yeah, I'm going to put this one in our thing. You got one wide range reversal. You got a 180 reversal on major support. Now I got a three bar reversal on major support. And now I have greater than 100% with a bull flag and a one, two, three weekly. Yeah, that looks great. I guess, like I said, the entry is not a no-brainer, but it's going on the watch list. And I like that we're gapping down. I'm, just, I'm not going to be in a hurry to enter anything. ECL, this was in a week ago um, weekend letter, and I was trying to sell the 160 puts, and we never got filled, and I canceled it because it was spready. Um, but look. Daily, this is daily, week, daily, weekly, monthly, amazing strength. It's bottoming pattern on the monthly. It's an uptrend now on the weekly, but the 20, higher pivot highs, higher pivot lows. So I'm not going to rush into it, but that looks great. ANET's a call spread idea. It's an M top with a lower high. Uh, PB, uh, there was a couple of these regional banks. There was an article in Barron's saying, you know, I, I didn't read it because I don't care about fundamentals, but I wrote down these symbols um, that the uh, the author was saying that these are real banks, so to speak. But guess what? I don't care what he says because... I ain't touching them unless they, they meet our technical approach. And as of right now, they all look like garbage. All right, so this is strong as can be, orly, but it's at a prior high. It's a small little buy set up bull flag. But the problem is there's a big old void under underneath. Right, Joe. So I love when I have a technical pattern and then the fundamentalists like it too. And that's why I often ask you all, you know, the ones that follow fundamentals, Alex, Debbie, you know, uh, McCraw, et cetera. I'm like, is this a, a real company? Um, all right. So things are still, I'm just totally sidelined here. Um, here, I had a couple of alarms go off pre-market, FIS, um, gap down. So here's another bottoming pattern. But it's good to go because, um, well, no, I didn't post this as an official trade. But let's set an alarm at mm, 55.45. Bottoming pattern. Surely don't want to be buying a bottoming pattern with market pulling in here. 
but nothing wrong with setting an alarm. Done. Uh, so look at look at um, WDC bottom right. Uh, there's no pattern though, but it's ripping. Look at the cousin STX. Not rushing into anything, but let's you know let's watch it. Um, square we were in from um, last week. Nice gap down. Uh, so we we have both a bear call credit spread and also a bear put debit spread. On Daku we have a a call spread. This one's been tough to trade. Um, XLE under Friday's low call spread idea. Um, MU middle screen strong, but you know, the, I can, I'm not going to even waste my time looking. There's going to be no premium at Friday's low or Thursday's low rather because because of the holiday. Uh, okay, thanks, McGraw. Uh, what other alarms do I got here? So yeah, Myrna. Uh, so Myrna is good to go if if you can get the premium. And then RPD alarm. Okay, but it was a false. My alarm went off pre-market, so it's a false alarm. So now I just reset it. And that's good to go if it triggers, which that ain't going to happen if the market stays weak. Uh, Stephen, I would say it's totally average. Um, when you say the word wow, are, are you saying that's too many? Um, but Myrna's the only one that's triggered.